Welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. My name is Danny Rocks. Today we'll continue to explore the incredible power of pivot tables. We will use a pivot table to help us to make sense out of this long list of data for daily sales. Sales that start in early June of 2007 and continue down through the end of August in 2008. A pivot table is just made for this task. Let's create a pivot table. Data. Pivot table, pivot chart, report, and we will accept all the defaults by clicking finish. And now since we only have two fields, let's take our date field and we will drag it and drop it into the row area of our template and take sales and drag it and drop it into the data area. We can now remove the field list. And if we look at our pivot table at this point, the pivot table looks very similar to our daily sales register. Let's go back to the pivot table and we will use the power to group our data to show a summary by year, month, and quarter. Here's how we do it. With one cell selected in the date area of our pivot table, go to the drop down on our toolbar, select group and show detail, and group. What we want to do is produce a summary report by month, by quarter, and by year. Pivot table, OK, and there we have it. We have our summary by year, quarter, and by month. So now we took what was one row area, and we now have three row areas. We have our outer row, which are the years. We have the 2007 and 2008. For the inner rows, we have quarters for each of the year, and we also have another inner row, which is the month. And over here is our data area. This is the summary uh, using the sum function. Okay, now that we have those three rows, what if we took one of the rows, in this case our outer row, the year, and moved it to a column area? Just drag it and drop it. So now we have our years up here, and of course I can filter on my column. If I only want to see 2008 information, I filter it to show it. Let's bring back everything. And now we have what would be a great way to produce a chart. But before we do that, notice that we have grand totals down here for the rows and also the columns. So here's our grand total for the column, our grand total for the row. We don't need both of those. Let's remove one of them from our pivot table. Right mouse click, choose hide, and it's now off the pivot table. Okay, now over on the toolbar, let's go over and create a chart one click and we will have our chart. Now a pivot table chart allows us to filter. So if I want to see only sales for the first and the second quarter for both years, I can click there. If I want to bring everything back, I say show all and OK. If I only want to see sales for one year on my chart, I deselect everything and select a year, for example 2008 and click OK. And let's bring everything back. And notice that we have two toolbars up here. We have our uh, chart wizard that we're familiar with. So if I want to do anything that I've done with uh, any other chart, I can do it. So I have two options. If I want to change the uh, type of chart, I can easily select that. OK, notice that the chart is on its own individual worksheet. Let's rename that. Let's call that pivot chart. And let's get in the habit of renaming our pivot tables. The pivot table is on its own sheet. Let's call that pivot table. OK, now I want to show you an additional way that we can group our data. This time we want to group by week. So let's restore our years back to the row area. Just drag it from the column, put it on the row, and now make sure that we've selected a cell in our date area. Come back to our drop down, go back to group and show detail, but this time ungroup. 
So now we're back to our starting point in the pivot table. Let's go back to our drop down and choose group and show, go back and choose group. But this time, instead of choosing month, quarter, and year, we're going to summarize by week. Now notice that there is no weekly summary up here. We choose days and then the number of days that will comprise our week, seven. Choose OK. And there we have our grouping by weeks. Now I might. Uh, as an extra step, go back and check my calendar to see which day of the week June 1st was. And I might put my starting date back there of May 28th, let's say. So there you have it. You've learned how to use a pivot table to group your information to make sense out of long list of sales. We'll see you in the next Tips and Time Savers.